will come back to this course on polymer chemistry and in this lecture lecture 16 we will discuss lecture on leaving radical polymerization and uh, we will talk about three different type of leaving radical polymerization atrp safrp and raft we will talk about the full forms in, in the appropriate time and uh, i plan to just give you examples of commercial polymers which are made use of this uh, radical polymerization technique and then we will conclude this module of radical polymerization radical chain polymerization at the end by giving you a brief summary of what we have learned in radical chain polymerization. Just recap the last lecture we discussed in detail uh, different polymerization processes uh, and we spend a lot of time on emulsion polymerization and we discuss we just introduced the concept of living polymerization and let us begin from the same page we left in the last lecture. Now, as we were discussing that in a normal chain polymerization process as soon as the, the initiation reaction is slower as we know initiation reaction is slower. So, the chain initiation takes place during uh, time during almost during entire polymerization time and the propagation step is fa faster. So, as soon as the radical generates it is undergo propagation reaction and at the end bimolecular termination reaction happen and the polymers become dead. With time you generate different molecular polymers and of course, those polymers are not uh, live or they are dead. So, you have a much larger or broader molecular polymers. Now, if we can and by any means start almost all the chains at more or less same time that means, initiation must be faster and then let the polymers all these chains which just started let them undergo polymerization reaction or propagation reaction for same duration. Then what happened now the, that has to happen this propagation has to be much lower compared to initiation first of all and if that happen or if that has to happen then all these polymers should be live that means, they are reactive to the monomer. So, they can undergo polymerization reaction. So, if they remain live you can add a second monomer and form block copolymer at the end of the polymerization. Now, how, how can you achieve this all this point we just talked about now in a normal radical reaction what happened you get a radical which immediately reacts with a monomer to start the chain and you have this all this uh, reaction forming R m n dot and propagation continued R m n plus 1 dot and so on and this this initiation process is slower. So, as soon as this uh, radical generates they undergo polymerization reaction and this, this two reaction m n dot plus m n dot they undergo bimolecular reaction forming either m n m plus m depending upon which type of termination reaction they are undergoing. So, then you get a dead polymer. Now, if by any means if you can read what is the rate of termination reaction? Rate of termination reaction we know k t m dot square where m dot is the concentration of total radical total propagating radical. So, this is summation of all the concentration of all the propagating radical present. Now, if you can reduce if you can reduce this m dot then what happen R t comes down much lower. If you are any means if you can reduce this m dot then R t comes down. So, if you can bring down such a level that R t is insignificant then 
there practically no termination reaction is hap would happen in this case. So, that will ensure that the polymers which are forming they are not killed or the, so the chains which is getting initiated they are not killed. Now, that is one thing. Now, how do you achieve? If m dot is very low, then what is R p? R p also we know this k p m m dot. Now, if this is very slow, then the rate of polymerization also will be lower compared to a normal radical polymerization. So, that ensures if you can bring down the concentration of this that ensures that the termination reaction is much low or is basically insignificant. Now, how do you achieve how do you achieve the condition where you let all the polymers all the chains react for the same duration. Now, that is achieved by a reversible termination or reversible transfer reaction. Say I have a initiator molecule which is R z, so, typically all the time in normal reaction we write a single arrow which means in irreversible reaction. Now, in this case we are writing double arrow which means this is a reversible reaction. Now, if the structure of Z is such that it is inactive radical, then this would not take part in propagating radical propagating step. So, only this will take part in propagation step. Now, if this will again react with the monomers and form different chain length. Now, because this is a radical, it will be again part of the equilibrium process with Z. So, this is a case we are talking about reversible termination. So, if this this happened, in normal case, if this bimolecular reaction happened, you get a termination step dead polymer, but in this case because this is reversible it can again come back and give you back this active radical and inactive radical. Now, if the structure of this is such that your this equilibrium is shifted mostly towards right hand side, then what happened? This radical stays or spend most of his time in a dormant form. This is a dormant form. This does not take part in the polymerization reaction, where for a small fraction of their lifetime, they present in this active form. So, what happened in this way? You are reducing the concentration of the radical active radical present and that will ensure that your termination reaction are negligible. Because this is a reversible termination reaction, this radical is not under if it does not undergo any termination reaction, it, it can react with the monomer and again go back to the dormant form because it is the equilibration process or reversible process. So, that all the mono all the radicals all the the propagating radicals we generate from the initial initiation reaction they will spend more or less same amount of time in as a active form and as a dormant form which will ensure that all the polymer chains are progressing or reacting during or for a same number same amount of time or same duration. 
So, one more time if you have a initiator which reversibly form this r dot and z dot where r dot is active radical and z is a inactive radical because of its structure. Then what happened only these undergo polymerization or propagation reaction. Now, at the very beginning the concentration of r dot is quite high. So, they will the beginning they will undergo some termination reaction till the concentration of z dot is much higher at very beginning this and this forms this might undergo bimolecular termination reaction. So, you get drop in r dot concentration and you get more and more z dot at beginning. And once the concentration of z dot is sufficiently higher compared to r dot and also you have chosen this equilibrium such a way that the equilibrium constant is towards this side. Then uh, what happened? This equilibrium is shifted mainly towards this side. So, the average time, average time a radical, a propagating radical spent in this form, which is active form, which can react with the monomer and propagate, is much lower compared to the time a average a radical spent in dormant form or inactive form. By this way, you are ensuring this after the initial period of time the concentration of the radicals are small which will ensure that the termination reaction is negligible and also because this is equilibrium process every radical is coming out and going in the dormant form this is all the all this time all this prop propagating radical is spending same amount of time in this form. So, they are undergoing the propagating radical for same duration, which ensures that the chain length of the polymer produced is almost similar size. So, PDI would be very narrow, say 1.02 to 1.1 or 1.2, something like this. So, they are they are very close. And at the, the end of the reaction, again they will remain in this form. So, you can add a second monomer to form a block copolymer. There are three types of living radical polymerization. First one is ATRP atom transfer radical polymerization. In this case your initiator is a halide and you have a redox reaction where you have a Q plus halide. it can undergo a reversible atom transfer reduction process where you get R dot plus C U B R 2 L. L is a organic ligand which basically complex with this copper salts. So, that the copper salts remain in soluble remain soluble in the organic solvent. So, this now again can react with M form R m n dot it can be m 1 m 2 and so on. So, it happens this happens to all the radicals and this again go the same reaction form R m n b r plus C u So, at any moment of time the concentration of this is very small which means the termination reaction is very less and because this is a part of equilibrium. So, one more radical is coming out capturing a monomer increasing the chain length going into the equilibrium second monomer second radical is coming out reacting with the monomer and going to the reaction. So, average time this pains in terms of active form is same for all the propagating radicals. So, chain length for all the propagating radicals are same. Now, if I write the equilibrium constant for this reaction, this is this is m dot. So, let us write this for this reaction m n dot we are writing m dot 
and copper 2 plus and initiator this side is initiator which is this uh, initiator is this and C u plus which is this. I am writing if you confuse I am writing this equilibrium reaction for So, this reaction this the k k of this reaction would be given by this. So, the concentration of this propagating radicand is given by k i c u 2 plus k i plus k i c u plus by c u 2 plus i is r b r concentration of i r is the concentration of the concentration of r b r. So, what is r p? Rate of polymerization will be given by k p m and concentration of the radical which is given by k p m k i c u plus by c u 2 plus. So, that is the rate equation and the molecular weight would be given by the total number of monomers is reacted. So, m 0 is the initial concentration of your monomer by m t is the monomer present at time t divided by total initiator concentration, which is given by the conversion m 0 by i 0. each initiator form one radical and one radical produces one chain. So, if you have 100 monomers polymerized with two chains, then total degrees of polymerization would be 100 by 2 is 50. Okay. Now, if you plot with time say this is experimental plot you get say for bulk you get and say if your solution you get a slower rate because this is straight line which means that this is a first order reaction. Example of R B R is one phenyl ethyl bromide and A L is four four di five no nine. 2 2 dash by pyridine. So, if you have this all these three plus tyrene in bulk or solution you get experimentally this. So, what happens to the molecular weight if you plot molecular weight versus time what will you get? Again, it is a straight line. As the time goes, more reaction forward, so more propagation happen. So the reaction, uh, the molecular weight increases linearly. Where in case of normal chain polymerization, 
the molecule you can get very high molecular weight even at the beginning of the polymerization and such but in this case the molecular weight is small at the beginning and it increases slowly after as the time goes you can take a monomer and do a reaction like this and mix a polymer and then can add a second monomer you can form a block copolymer like this you can take a and a dihalide then you can make tri block copolymer as well Okay, and for a simple case, uh, the PDI for this sort of reaction given by this. So higher the molecular weight, lower is the PDI. Now second type of a living radical polymerization is stable free radical polymerization. In this case, the same thing uh, you can generate that Z dot which is very stable like nitroxide triazolinyl trital type radical for example, I have initiator like this when it forms. two radicals now this radical commonly known as tempo this is very stable because because of these two large group they cannot take part in bimolecular termination reaction among themselves so that is why this react this radical is very stable and that can be stored for days in a in a container uh, which can be used later on so same thing happened in this case uh, because you have a stable radical this can react with same form rmn dot which again which again undergo reversible reaction and form the same logic which we discussed for ATRP and do the living chain polymerization and this when this stable free radical polymerization is done um, through nitroxide it is often called NMP nitroxide mediated polymerization. So, the logic all the arguments remain similar as in the case of ATRP and again this is a case of reversible termination like ATRP. Now the third case which is wrapped reversible addition fragmentation transfer the name is suggests that it take advantages or advantage of reversible transfer reaction. Now, in this case what happened you have 
the same way you have a chain come to that you have a chain transfer agent here which is having general structure of something and give you the more common most common structure it could be something else as well but for time being i will just give you the most common example. So, it is a dithioester. Now, if you have a radical which can undergo reversible addition to this, this S and form R S this is let us put it carbon. Okay, let us do it one more time getting little confused. So, I have a chain transfer agent which has generic structure like the diethyl ester and I have a radical produced by normal thermal initiation of some other reactions like thermal initiation of EIBN or benzoyl peroxide. And then it can undergo reversible addition and form let to differentiate make it R star this radical. Now, if this bond you have chosen such a way in this case a thio bond that this can again reversibly fragment by a homolytic cleavage, then this is formed. Now, this radical can react with monomer forming m n dot. So, the this initial reaction as well. Now, this can undergo similar reversible addition and form fragmentation reaction. So, in general we can write that this is general. So, you have a reversible addition, reversible fragmentation and this is a transfer reaction because original radical is getting transferred and getting terminated and forming a new 
radical which is a transfer reaction we know. For example, of this uh, wrapped transfer reagent is we can give a simple example of uh, transfer reaction. So, in case of raft reaction, what is the molecular weight? Again, like earlier, it is the conversion multiplied by the initial mole of the monomer and the conversion of the raft reagent plus the conversion of the initiator. So, this gives you the number of change form in case of ATIP or other we discussed that this is by the total initiator molecule. Remember the expression for the ATIP we had P m 0 by I 0. Basically, each, each I 0 was forming one radical and that radical was participating in the propagating chain. So, this gives the number of monomers reacted divided by the number of chains formed which gives you the degrees of polymerization. Now, in this case this is a transfer reaction. So, you have to include the number of radicals from the initiator molecules which is given by if it is thermal polymerization is 2 phi this is a uh, your uh, the efficiency factor and the conversion of this and because each raft agent form one radical. So, you have to con include the concentration of the raft reagent as well initiator concentration. So, total like the case of transfer reaction chain transfer reaction we have included this in this case also we have to include both this. Now, because typically we use the I 0 concentration much lower than the raft concentration we can use m 0 this is the conversion of the raft region. Now, if you do reaction such a way that all the raft regions are or did take part in the polymerization reaction we choose the raft reagent such as such a way that every raft reagent is participating in the transfer reaction. The chain transfer coefficient for the raft reagent we use is very high. So, that all that raft reagent can actually participate in the uh, chain transfer reaction. So, P dash becomes close to 1. So, finally, the becomes the raft agent's concentration. So, in this case the molecular weight depends upon the because it is a chain transfer reagent and the chain transfer con constant is much higher compared much higher. So, that uh, the all the raft reagents is taking part in the chain transfer reagent and also because the concentration of initial raft reagent is much higher than the original initiator ra radical. We can simply write the average degrees of polymerization at the end of the poly, uh, polymerization is um, similarly as in case of ATIP reaction or SFRP reaction, where I0 is can be replaced by the raft agent concentration at the beginning. And again, for like other cases, we can utilize this uh, raft reaction, reversible addition fragmentation transfer reaction for making uh, block copolymer at the end of the polymerization if we add a second monomer. Now, with this uh, we will end this discussion of uh, leaving radical polymerization. What we will do is quickly uh, uh, go through uh, uh, different commercial polymerization. Now, we will do this uh, go a little faster because this just information nothing more to understand. So, we will spend little time 
or uh, on these uh, examples and uh, you can if you want you can get more information of any textbook or some other literature this is just to complete your knowledge on uh, uh, radical chain polymers and you have studied for last uh, 5 6 lectures uh, what is radical polymerization li radical chain polymerization and uh, different talked about different monomer structures but finally it's uh, it matters or it is useful if some commercial polymers are made using these techniques so this once you know that there are several polymers which are made using this technique then uh, your learning will be complete uh, in that uh, sense now the simplest monomer is uh, polyethylene and uh, polyethylene is synthesized at high pressure and a temperature above the melting temp its melting temperature now remember this is a gaseous reaction to polyethylene is a gas to solid form solid polymer the volume change is significant now remember we talked about the effect of pressure briefly that in the reaction in the polymerization reaction if the volume change is higher then with increasing pressure you can increase the reaction rate or you can make the reaction with more feasible so that is why it, in this case the high pressure is used and as i said that you have to keep your reaction temperature above the melting temperature in this case so that the polymers have um, mobility so that they can undergo further propagation reaction so this reaction is done above the melting temperature it's a continuous process and while talking about the chain transfer to the polymers we have give example of the polyethylene because uh, indeed uh, chain transfer reaction happen to polymers in this case so branches are produ produced so this is a highly branched polymer and uh, the mostly ldp ld low density polyethylenes are produced in this case and because the this is a branch structure it is low crystalline because the polymers cannot align each other parallelly if they are branched they cannot align all the time so the crystallines come down and once the crystallinity come down the density of the polymers also come down so it is also low density typical molecular for the commercial polymers are 20000 to 100000 pdi is 3 to 10 and tg of these polymers are about 120 degree centigrade and tm is uh, from 105 to 110 degree centigrade and density as i said it's low density one more time and applications are in the most of the this has uh, very good strength flexibility impact resistant and these have good, good melt flow behavior if you have a melt good melt flow behavior then you can do the processing easily you can melt processing becomes easier and in this case because we talked about application of these polymers in fling so blow molding where basically the molding is done by blowing air through a molten polymer so that you can make uh, thin flames that can be done easily if you have a good melt flow behavior and polyethylenes are used mostly as flames for packaging material for household and agricultural construction applications for example whatever we commonly see talked about say polythenes uh, these bags pouches uh, food wraps or cloth wraps and all these things they are made up of polythene polyethylene and the other examples now in this uh, this slide and in the coming few slides where we talk about the other polymers i'll just mention few examples now there are hundreds of other examples other applications these polymers are applied so for, for this class it is not possible to cover all the examples i'll try to give most common applications of these polymers for this and for the coming polymers and there are trade names where you by these names these polymers are get sold in the market and again there are other companies sell these polymers in different trade names i am not this is not exclusively this is a very few of the trade names are covered in this slide polystyrene generally this is synthesized by continuous solution process some cases uh, where you need polystyrene beads and if you have 
during the suspension polymer with some cross linker divinyl benzene type compounds then you can actually make uh, cross linked bead polystyrene bead by suspension polymerization the linear polymerization the typically used for commercial applications have molecular weight from 50000 to 150000 and pdi of 2 to 4 and tg is around 85 degree centigrade and it's a very rigid polymers because the backbones is uh, having aromatic structure if it's uh, uh, it, it the chain is uh, not difficult to rotate the single ball rotation becomes difficult so it's a very rigid plastics so it cannot amorph it cannot crystallize if you want to crystallize them polymer then you have to align them next to each other parallelly if you have the rigid backbone then it is very difficult becomes very difficult that is why polystyrene is a completely amorphous polymers polymer it has good strength and dimensional stability it has only elongation from say 1 to 3 percent it has very good resistance to aqueous bases and acids but there are some problems a disadvantage in polystyrene structure too because it's aromatic structure it has poor weatherability that means you can it absorbs uv light and becomes yellow and it is soluble in hydrocarbon solvent so it is uh, is resistance to hydrocarbon solvents is poor so often polystyrene is used with this stabilizer uv stabilizer and also as a component or as a blend with other co other polymers or a copolymers with other monomers for example, in the beginning of the emulsion polymers, we talked about acclimatal butadiene styrene rubber or in the uh, butadiene styrene rubber as such. These are the examples of copolymer. Very, very common applications of polystyrene and these audio tape cassettes, office fixtures, these tumblers, and in medical, because this styrene has aromatic backbone, this is stable on irradiation now so you can if you want to these medical equipments are typically sterilized by high energy radiations by like gamma ray so this uh, these uh, polymer polystyrene used for medical applications like pipettes petri dishes and medical containers and so on a lot of applications of polystyrene goes as a foam foam is f foam of polymer polystyrene is formed by impregnating uh, blowing agents and uh, you have seen yourselves many applications of polystyrene foams like disposable drinking cups the cushions cushion packaging and thermal insulator and sometimes this uh, cushion packaging is like your your in your lab the reagent bottles comes with some packing outside or some boxes made up of polystyrene foams and they are also used for thermal insulations if they are you know, wherever do you need to protect the uh, the brittle material inside like a cartoon fast fill trays and these are cheap polymers so you can use this for very common applications and crossing polystyrene bead which can be formed by suspension polymers they can be used for chromatographic materials in a chromatographic polymer this polystyrene columns or styrogel columns are made by this uh, cross link polystyrene beads. So, uh, polystyrenes have also some high end applications in that sense. Some of the trade names by which polystyrene is sold is mentioned here styrofoam, cellophoam, dietin, and so on. There, these are the very few list of the trade names we are talking about. Next, we talk about the vinyl families, and the most important polymer in the vinyl families are polyvinyl chloride is generally synthesized by suspension polymers polymerization in batch process it has low crystallinity it has tg is uh, around 81 degree centigrade or 80 degree centigrade now when you process these polymers at high temperature it is actually evolved or it produces hcl and that is very detrimental for several applications so in almost in every application of polyvinyl alcohol one need to add this heat stabilizer like metal oxide, fatty acid, salt to to basically minimize this LC HCl production. Otherwise, the uh, there is no practical applications of PVC or polyvinyl chloride. Polyvinyl chloride also tough. It has a rigid backbone, so it is rigid plastics, and also uh, it 
finds several applications and there are a lot of applications and most of the applications are PVC are plasticized, PVC plasticized means it by adding some additives which are called plasticizer T G is brought down. So, that at room temperature or the ambient temperature the PVC becomes flexible and uh, the applications of um, flexible PVC are lot uh, all the pipes most of the pipes you see in the home or other applications are made of PVC. There are applications in vinyl slidings like window frame, rain gutters. They are also used in packaging material as a packaging, ma packaging materials like bottles, box lids and see. They are also used in wear and cable insulations for electrical wear and they are also used in some example of other uses as surgical and protective gloves. Some trade names are mentioned here. Other families of uh, vinyl members uh, we will not I will not discuss in detail, but these are also important vinyl polymers like vinyl acetate. Vinyl acetate are hydrolyzed to vinyl alcohol to make polyvinyl alcohols. Polyvinyl alcohols are not produced from polyvinyl alcohol uh, because vinyl alcohol does not exist in that sense. So, polyvinyl alcohols are produced from the hydrolysis of polyvinyl acetates. The other important polymers in this family is polyvalentinin chloride, the structure is mentioned in the bottom. So, we we'll move to the next set of polymers is the acrylic family is and the most important is polymethyl methacrylate that is actually covers most of the you know volume of acrylic polymers. And uh, poly Methyl uh, PM is actually synthesized by solution suspension or by emulsion polymerization and uh, it is amorph as you can see the structure that it is having the bulky side groups. So, it is very difficult to align the chains are difficult to align. Uh, so, they are uh, perfectly uh, uh, they are um, completely amorphous not not crystallinity they have T g value around 105 degree 105 degree centigrade. They have very low refracting index which makes them uh, exceptional have optical clarity because the no, no aromatic group containing. So, they have a very good weatherability, they have good strength and some of the applications are in sheets, rods, safety glasses, indoor and outdoor lightings and uh, optical fibers because of the effect wind is low. So, they are used in a optical fibers for light transmission, eye goggles and CD, the cheap CDs are manufactured by compact is manufactured by uh, from PMMA, though they are very um, they are very, not very impact resistant, they are brittle. Some of the trade names are shown here. The other acrylic families uh, polymethyl methacrylic acids, polyacrylamide, polyacrylic acid, polyacrylonitrile, they also have are produced commercially and find several applications. And some other monomers which are also used uh, or polymerized by radical chain polymerization are like uh, vinyl carbazole and N vinyl pyridine. So, they are uh, also used, uh, they are the monomers which are also polymerized by radical polymerization. So, with this what uh, we come to the end of this module on radical polymerization and now what we will do in next uh, 5, 10 minutes is just to give the summary or recollect your memory uh, basically give you the most important points of uh, the radical uh, chain polymerization which we discussed in that 5, 6, 7 class uh, lectures. So, radical chain polymerization are, as uh, um, we can see from our discussion that uh, radical chain polymerization are comparatively easier to carry out uh, in, in respect or in comparison to the uh, step growth polymerization. Provided you take care of the solvent, uh, if you are using a solvent and any impurity which can terminate the radicals 
or any impurities which can act as a chain transfer reagent. So, if you can minimize these impurities like chain transfer reagent or any uh, inhibitor which actually uh, kills the radicals, then you can uh, you can have this radical polymerization uh, uh, be done easily. Now, as we seen is discussed, uh, the radical polymerization is done mostly for the double bond containing containing monomers, but not all the monomers which contain a double bond can be polymerized uh, by radically and that depends on the both the thermodynamic and kinetic factor. Thermodynamic factor we discussed in uh, uh, two, two lectures back that if you the, the polymerizability of a monomer in uh, in a radical chain polymerization is mainly governed by the uh, en enthalpy value del H value uh, not the del S value and del H value depends on whether the monomer is stabilized uh, whether it is electronically or hyperconjugation or, hyper or by resonance. If it is stabilized then del H value comes down. If the polymer produced from these molecules is strained highly strained then also del H value comes down. So, we, we saw the examples of uh, alpha methyl striarene or 1, 1, 1, 2 disubstituted monomers like uh, malonic and malic anhydride where uh, these uh, the radical polymerization becomes uh, uh, difficult and uh, that is not only the thermodynamic factor the kinetic factor also plays if the the resulting radicals cannot approach each other uh, or radi radical uh, if, uh, if radicals produced or the propagating radicals cannot approach a monomer for example in the case of one two disubstitute reaction then the polymerization becomes uh, difficult uh, like malic anhydride now initiator you should choose such a way that the uh, reactions uh, happened in a moderate rate so that um, uh, the temperature which you are planning to do a reaction or rather you should choose a, your polymerization reaction temperature such a way that the half life of your initiator is uh, somewhat between say um, your reaction time frame it should not be too low so the reaction is too fast or it should not be too slow that reaction is very slow. And we have talked about these, uh, these equations several times uh, the rate of polymerization and the kinetic chain length which related to the molecular weight or the number of average degrees of polymerization. And in both cases if you increase the mole molar concentration of the monomer the molecular weight as well as the rate of polymerization increases. But when we try to do that by carrying out the reaction in the bulk condition where you get a maximum concentration of the monomer. The other complication arises like increasing viscosity or the, in the lot of heat generation. So, it is not always possible to increase the monomer concentration. If you want to increase the, um, the reaction rate by increasing temperature, we have found out that it does increase the reaction rate in most cases, but the simultaneous it also decreases the molecular weight. If you have the chain transfer reagents are present, the chain transfer, chain, transfer, transfer, chain transfer reactions actually limit the molecular weight build time. The more the amount of chain transfer reagent, the lower is the molecular weight and uh, we have seen that you can actually take advantage if you can do the chain transfer or chain termination by reversible way where you can utilize this reversible chain transfer or termination reaction and carry out a leaving radical polymerization where your the polydispersity index is much lower compared to the normal polymer radical polymerization as also the polymers rem remain uh, leaving at the end of the polymer so can utilize this 
by making block copolymers by addition of second second monomer at the end of the reaction. And all we also talked about the different polymerization processes like bulk suspension, emulsion, dispersion, solution, different types of processes and the advantages and disadvantages of all these processes and uh, depending upon your requirement you should choose uh, the polymerization process uh, which suit you the most. And at the end we discussed a uh, few examples of the commercial polymers which are synthesized uh, using this radical chain polymerization technique. So, with this uh, we conclude this our module on uh, radical chain polymerization and what we will do what we will start in the next lecture is uh, ionic polymerization where basically instead of radical this chain polymerization will be initiated by a, a, a ionic species whether it is a ion cationic or an ionic species. So, with this we will end this lecture today and we will begin the our discussion on ionic chain polymerization in the next class next lecture.